It's a series in acid base fluids and electrolyte disturbance. We have talked about osmosis, osmotic pressure, osmolality, osmolarity, measured osmolality, calculated osmolality, osmolar gap. Today let's talk about effective osmolality. Is there a thing as ineffective osmolality? Yes, indeed. And this is the topic of today's video. So let's get started. Some words of wisdom. I bargained with life for a penny, but life would pay no more. However, I begged at evening, when I counted my scanty store. For life is a just employer, he gives you what you ask. But once you have set the wages, why, you must bear the task. I worked for a menial's hire, only to learn, dismayed, that any wage I had asked for life, life would have willingly paid. Always be ambitious, always demand more from life. Don't be sad. Smile for heaven's sakes. I find it funny when they say, when I counted my scanty store, this is very old school. Today it should say, when I checked my credit card statement. As you know, cell membrane transport is either passive or active. Osmosis is just simple diffusion. Passive, no need for ATP, no need for a carrier. Osmosis, simple diffusion of water, from high concentration of water to low concentration of water through a semi-permeable membrane, or from low concentration of solute to high concentration of solute, mainly sodium. Osmotic pressure, the pressure needed to stop osmosis, which happens to equal the pressure of osmosis. Osmol, osmosis caused by a mole. Normal osmolality of the plasma, 290. Osmolality, the amount of force per volume, measured in milliosmoles per kilogram. What about osmolarity? Which, the larity is per liter. Measured osmolality, measured in the lab. Calculated osmolality, calculated using the equation, depending on the big three. Normally, measured equals calculated. Or, at least, measured is greater than calculated by less than 10. If more than 10, then the osmolar gap is more than 10. Houston, we have a problem. There is a Trojan horse in your body. When we calculate osmolality using this equation, we depend on the big three. The biggest of the biggest is sodium, then glucose, then blood, urea, and nitrogen. The main ECF cation, the main source of energy, the main source of bleep. However, of those three, only two are effective, we call them effective osmolality, and one is ineffective, or useless, or garbage, or BS. Who do you think the BS is? Yes, the blood urea nitrogen. Why? Because the blood urea nitrogen can safely and freely pass through membrane, going in and going out. How is this an effective osmol? It's not. Why is that? Because remember, one of the conditions for osmosis to happen, the membrane has to be permeable to water only and not to the solute. But the membranes are permeable to urea, so they can just pass coming in and out. They cannot exert osmosis. They are not effective, so they are not part of the effective osmolality. So the big three are sodium, glucose, urea. But urea is BS. It diffuses freely across the cell membrane. When it diffuses freely, it cannot create an osmotic gradient. It's ineffective. So osmosis, let's try to measure the effective osmolality. We only need the sodium and the glucose, urea is BS. This is called effective osmolality or e-osmolality. To sum up, measured osmolality, measured in the lab, we actually measure how many osmoles are in the plasma. Calculated using the equation depending on the big three. Effective osmolality only depending on the big two because urea is BS. What will a nephrologist tell you? Urea is BS. It's not effective osmosis. And sodium is the king of osmosis. Also, it's the major extracellular cation. That's it for today. I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and as always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. Medicosis Perfectionalis.